Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game from the women's section of the American Cup. Uh, it is the eight time uh, US women's champion uh, Grandmaster Irina Krush versus um, a woman Grandmaster Tateva Brahamian and it's uh, like the title suggests uh, it's a game where the Nimzo Indian goes terribly wrong but it's not um, uh, the, the the problem is not of course in the Nimzo Indian the problem is in one particular move uh, that makes uh, all of it possible but um, it's uh, it's a very tough game and it's it features a beautiful sacrifice by uh, by Irina that um, it's it's very uh, instructional and you, you guys will learn a lot on how to deal with um, with the Nimzo in this game. So let's check it out. Uh, it is uh, from the semifinals. Uh, the other the other pair from the semifinals is um, uh, Fidi Master Alice Lee, 13 year old, who we've seen a couple of her games uh, against Nazi Pakita. They uh, they drew their game, uh, so they will uh, play another one. Uh, as uh, it, it, the rules are the same as in the men's section. So here we have pawn to d4, knight to f6, c four and e6 with knight to c3 and bishop to b4 the nimzo indian defense is on the board we have e3 uh, castles and now bishop to d3 the bishops attack against the nimzo pawn to d5 we have c captures c captures and knight to e2 so nothing new here everything we've seen before rook e8 bishop d2 we have c6 and now castles bishop back to d6 the bishop uh, doesn't want to overstay his welcome on this diagonal rook to c1 and now we have knight to a6 the knight will now get remaneuvered to c7 and from there you have a uh, plenty of options and uh, the position is a known one it's been reached in 2021 in the uh, opera euro rapid preliminaries between yanni pomnishi and uh, linear dominguez perez uh, where nepo lost the game after playing f3 it's a fine move uh, the the problem is not in that move he just lost the game but here we have a3 and it is now as of move 11 that we have a completely new game so knight to c7 uh, we have pawn to f3 and now pawn to c5, a standard um, uh, Nimzo move going after white center. D captures with bishop captures and now knight to d4. Now the knight is beautifully placed here and we have knight to e6, uh, trying to trade the weird knight on c7 for the very strong knight on e4. And sure, um, uh, Irina says uh, let's do it, but uh, she wants the other knight to, to join on d4. So here bishop back to b6 is also the bishop is now hanging on c5, so bishop back to b6 and now king to h1 always a useful prophylactic idea getting the king off of that diagonal uh, bishop to d7 now preparing to bring the rook into the game also the bishop might end up on this diagonal as you'll see later on we have bishop to e1 uh, opening up the queen on the d file also the bishop can now easily be remaneuvered to any diagonal uh, knight to c5 going after the bishop here and this is the the really cool moment in the game uh, where the magic starts happening uh, the bishop is attacked of course you do not want to give up your light score bishop it's such a magnificent piece and also you uh, you, you would lose the bishop pair uh, the other problem is the e3 pawn is attacked so well, if you play something like queen d2 you defend the pawn then um, uh, uh, Tate will happily trade here and it's not it's not great uh, here Irina plays a most uh, impressive idea and that is bishop back to b1 she gives up the e3 pawn uh, to keep the bishop pair so look at this rook captures on e3 bishop to h4 now pins the knight uh, and now uh, the question is how do you how do you continue playing this with black probably best is to uh, trade as many pieces as possible as soon as possible something like knight to e6 opens up the bishop tries to trade off the knights and even if the knight comes to f5 which is a spectacular square now you're going to play bishop to b5 and you're really tying up white here still a very complicated game uh, a lot to do for both sides but it would be the way to go however that have played rook to e5 here and now, uh, of course, the idea is if, if pawn to f4, she wants to play rook to h5. Uh, but uh, Irina goes knight to g3. And now, how do you how do you react to this? It's a, uh, such a complicated position that uh, uh, after analyzing the game, I returned to this position and I allowed the engine to crunch the numbers up until like depth 45. I, I, I thought that, that there's no point in going above that uh, because even the engine has no idea how to approach this position with black. It's uh, uh, the, the engine gives off some weird ideas like uh, let's play a rook to c8 to c7 and then play g5 to kind of try and trap the bishop here but also we're stopping f4 uh, if we play g5 so th 
I mean, it, it, it's a bad position for black. Maybe you can play it, but it, you have to play injured moves to survive. Uh, in the game, bishop to c6 was played, and uh, it, it, it it simply doesn't work. And the problem it does uh, the the big problem why it doesn't work is specifically because now this knight has something to capture, and bishop to c6 ju uh, does just that. So look at this, pawn to f4. Uh, attacks the, uh, or rather, let me just show it to you. Instead of bishop to c6, let's say h6 was played. Uh, now the thing is, after pawn to f4, you can play rook to e8, and now if you try to pile up on the knight with knight to h5, you have this knight c to e4 move. That's the big difference. And now after bishop captures, you're going to play rook captures, and now the knight on d4 is hanging. That's the big difference from the line that actually happened in the game. And now if knight captures, okay, you're gonna play g captures, so your pawn structure in front of your king is all messed up, but you have the bishop pair, you have an active rook, white's knight is hanging, you know, you, you are still in the game and uh, might, might even be better. Uh, but after bishop to c6, this line no longer works as a defensive resource for white because now pawn to f4, rook back to e8, and now knight to h5 goes after the knight on f6. And now you don't have knight c to e4 because after the same line, uh, uh, now you have knight captures on c6, and the knight on d4 will no longer be a target like in the previous one. So bishop to c6 was just a, a beautiful way to help uh, Irina achieve, uh, you know, the position's full potential. So knight captures on c6 would be played, b captures, and now you just trade. Bishop captures, you're going to play d captures, and now knight captures with check, g captures, and now the queen comes into the attack, and this is uh, just dead loss for black. There's no way to play this. If you play something like king to h8, then rook f to d1 you have to uh, guard df6 pawn so let's say queen e7 now you pile up on the f6 pawn you can defend it with bishop d8 but uh, of course uh, white will just capture it captures captures and now bishop captures and uh, you resign so that's why uh, in this line this particular line knight to e4 doesn't work knight c to d7 was played seems like uh it should work, it's the same idea, the knight defends the f6 knight from uh, uh, d7 instead of from e4, but now we have knight to f5. Also a very nice idea would just be to trade on, on c6, look at this, knight captures, b captures, and bishop to f5, uh, you're gonna mess up uh, a black spawn structure, whatever black plays, let's say rook to c8, you're just gonna play bishop captures on d7, queen captures, and now even bishop captures on f6, where black cannot uh, recapture because knight to f6 check would fork the king and the queen. Queen. So knight c to d7, knight to f5 was played, also a, a fine idea, goes after the g7 pawn, g6 uh, forking both knights, but just knight to h6 with check, king to f8, uh, and now knight captures an f6, inviting the other knight to f6, knight captures, and now just knight to g4, going after the knight here, and that's pretty much it. The, uh, the problem is rook to e6 doesn't work because of the immediate f5, and now if g captures, uh, there comes a bishop captures on f5, and now after the rook moves, now look at this, bishop to e6, and now uh, the, the, the kraken has been unleashed, uh, there's no way to defend, rook captures, you're gonna play knight, captures on f6, and that's it, uh, next move, uh, a nice knight check will pick up the queen, or you try to, to capture it, but still, bishop captures, attacks the queen, once the queen moves, you bring your queen into the game, play like some like rook e1, cut off the king, play checkmate, or even just... Uh, uh, queen g7 check will, will be sufficient so that's why rook to e6 here just doesn't work so knight captures on g4 was played a uh, sort of a, a last attempt by by Tatev not to resign immediately and it comes with a with a, a very good idea here bishop captures on d8 capturing the queen and now knight to e3 complicating things even further now uh the queen and the rook are uh, under attack and there's there's only one move that gives white a clear winning advantage so feel free to pause the video and finish this masterpiece for Irina uh, while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not just looking for squares uh, where you can hide your queen. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is bishop captures on b6. This is what Irina played, and it was in this position on move 28 that Tatev Abrahamian resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. So congratulations to everyone who found bishop captures on b6. The problem with just moving the queen, okay, queen f3 still gives white uh, an advantage, but you, you will still have to work for your meal. But let's say you move the queen to some weird square, just real captures on d8 and now let's say rook f to e1 you, you try to save your rook d4 
uh, defends the knight. Now you have a brilliant knight here. You're threatening in G2. The rooks are absolutely spectacular. The bishop pair is slicing all the way here. This would not be an easy game for white. Uh, so uh, instead, bishop captures and b6 was played. And here you resign because of a very, very simple uh, uh, matter. The queen has to be captured. Otherwise, you're just down a queen. And the problem is after knight captures on d1, there's the uh, the, the always celebrated Zwischenzug, and that is bishop to c5 check. Uh, you save your bishop, and now once the king moves, you will play rook c captures or rook f captures, and d1 doesn't really matter, and you will be up a full dark square bishop. So, of course, down a piece, you have to resign. No point in playing this. So, yeah, after bishop captures on b6, beautiful way to end the game, and uh, what, a, what a spectacular game to tackle the, the Nimzo Indian defense. It was, uh, 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 uh it, it all came down to this when, when this knight to c5 was played, bishop was attacked this uh, a beautiful light square bishop uh, going after the pawn on e3 and then just bishop to b1 simple as that uh, give up a pawn but uh, you will make things very very complicated for black and here it it paid off uh, so yeah, uh, if you like playing the Nimzo, if you like playing um, uh, the bishop's attack against the Nimzo, maybe something that uh, you should consider in your own games. Uh, not, not a bad, uh, not a bad resource to know this uh, giving of, giving up of the e3 pawn. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Very nicely done by Irina. Uh, they will play one more game, and then if if Tata uh, strikes back, they will go into uh, into rapid tie breaks. If not, then Irina is off to the finals. Uh, so yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Paul Hinamund, Duitran, Ravishing Reptiles YouTube. Mike Wagner uh, and uh, thought, thought Dreams for a contribution uh, to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.